This video will demonstrate how to clear a T-section solo. A T-section is simply opposing dead space, and the principles used apply to any form of opposing dead space you may encounter. As you move towards the T-section, hug one of the walls while clearing the opposing side dead space. Continue advancing until you reach a point where moving forward would expose you unnecessarily to the dead space on your same side. Once you can no longer move forward safely, reorient towards the opposite side. Step off and move to the opposing wall while clearing the opposing dead space. Work your way up the wall, clearing as far as you can before reaching the 90-degree angle. At this point, snap out and attack the 90-degree angle on the side you are currently facing. Once clear, immediately shoulder check to clear the dead space behind you. Alternatively, if you perceive a higher threat level from the opposite side, reorient and attack that 90-degree angle first. All right, now that you got the general idea on how to attack a T-section solo, I'm now gonna demonstrate this in person. I have a T-section, not the greatest T-section, but it will work. I apologize for the ridiculous outfit here. Really buggy out here today, so this is keeping the mosquitoes off me. So, let me go ahead and demonstrate. So, regardless of which side I start on, it's rather irrelevant. So, I'm going to hug one side of the wall while attacking the opposing side because I have the best angle on that side while limiting my exposure to the same side dead space. So as I work up this wall, I'm going to work to a point where it really wouldn't be safe for me to work any further without opening my exposure to this side. My muzzle is already gonna be telegraphing my position there's really no way to get around that unless I really want to compress, which if you're really worried about the telegraphing, I'm not going to say it's wrong. So once I reach a position where I can no longer continue without really opening myself up to this dead space, my same side dead space, I'm going to go ahead and swap and begin working this side while pushing to the opposing wall. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to go ahead and swap and I'm going to back off up until I get to the opposing wall, and then I'm going to do the same thing. Now, once I work this to the point where um, I'm going to either have to attack this 90 or the opposing 90, I'm gonna to have to pick. Now, generally speaking, if they are equal threat, meaning I don't feel any higher level of threat from one side or the other, my ideal way to attack this is actually going to attack the, the side that I am currently facing first. The reason for that is because I have more distance away from that, but at the same time, because I am closer to this side, I have a better Bailey angle from this side. So once I attack this, and I get some sort of stimulus from this side, because I am much closer to this one, my bailing angle is significantly better, as opposed to if I were to swap and attack this angle, because I am essentially working from the depth from that dead space, my bail angle isn't as good if I get stimulus from that side. Regardless, whichever one I attack first, the moment I attack it and clear it, I'm gonna go ahead and shoulder check to see what's going on over there. So I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like full speed. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to commit yourself to either one of these, whether that's because you're feeling a very high level of threat from both of them, or simply because you just don't want to attack one while giving your back up to the other, you can do a head peek, which this is certainly the safest option for this. There are quite a few drawbacks to it, which I'll talk about here in a second. But because you're solo and you only got one set of eyes and one muzzle and you can only attack one of these at a time, another option is to head peek. And what that looks like is once I'm ready to attack one of these 90s, I just simply snap out real quick and head peek one of them just to see if there's anyone there. If there's no one there, I can go ahead and swap probably could push myself to the opposite wall to let that side breathe because I only saw this side and I did trigger what was, uh, I did trigger this side. So if there's anyone there, he now knows and is expecting me to be right here. So once I head peek this side, I am probably going to back off to the opposing side and then attack this from depth 
to at least displace me a little bit. So that way I'm not peeking at the same position if there was someone over there and he's now expecting me here. Alternatively, I know I'm giving a lot of alternatives here, but if I do head peek this, I can swap around, go to a knee and attack this side. That's an option too. But one thing I would recommend you do is if you are going to head peek, don't head peek and then come and attack this because he's going to expect you here if there was someone over there because you did trigger this angle. But the nice thing about the head peek is I am not dedicating myself to any, either one of these. So if I choose wrong and I attack this side and there's a dude right there, me hanging out here, it gives him a shot at me as opposed to this where I am only there for a split second and he's not gonna have an opportunity to get a good accurate shot on me. So there's advantages and disadvantages <clears throat> to that head peak, but in that particular case, especially in solo, it's actually a very valid tactic and technique.